This is the Brain Chip Podcast. Hear from our thought leaders about neuromorphic computing, beneficial AI, and how Brain Chip's Akita is pushing AI to the edge. This podcast is a place for investors, practitioners, and anyone interested in the future of AI. Hi, all. I'm Rob Telson, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Brainship. Welcome and thank you for joining our fifth episode of our Brainship podcast series. These events are structured to provide current and future investors for those interested in the Brainship technology as a path to better understand who we are, what we are doing, and where we are going. To recap, our first podcast went into detail on the history of Brainship. Our second episode focused on our mission, while episodes three and four focused on discussions with The Brain, Peter Vandermaid, and The Chip, Neil Mankar. Today's episode, we will focus on the outside looking in. We have the pleasure of having Alex Davinsky join us today. Some of you might know Alex as ticker symbol U, the channel that invests in you based on YouTube. Alex, on behalf of Brainship and our listeners, thank you very much for being with us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So I got to tell you, you're a pretty dynamic guy. I've, uh, I've spent some time watching your series of episodes and your approach to digging into technology and recognizing where companies solve business challenges and how these companies will establish growth and success. You know, my favorite episode actually is the 3D printing episode. I love the fact that you can build a home with an industrial 3D printer in like eight days I mean, that's huge. That, that can make such a massive impact on, um, you know, how we can solve a lot of the housing crisis and all these things going on throughout the world. But, uh, you know, just for our listeners' sake, Alex, why don't you take a moment and provide a bit of background on yourself? So I spent my first eight years at MIT. Uh, I was a rocket scientist there focused on radars and optics. So I was looking at telescopes and radar sensors uh, from airplanes looking down for the first four years, and then on the ground looking up uh, at rockets and missile launches for the next four years. So my background is in remote sensing. Uh, after that, I worked at uh, a web commerce company, and we focus on artificial intelligence in the e-commerce space there. And now I'm the host of Ticker Symbol U, where I focus on advanced technology stocks uh, mostly focused in the artificial intelligence space. It's amazing how you've transitioned from one aspect of it to another. And uh, as you've, you've evolved ticker symbol U, one of the things that, that I, I, I know I'm really curious about, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners are really curious about is when you invest in companies, what are you looking for? Yeah, so I'm looking for a few different things when I invest in companies. The first, I think, is really strong leadership, a really good understanding of the technology space that they're operating in and their vision of the future for that space, right? Uh, when you invest, you're making a forward-looking statement. So that vision of the future, I think, is really important. The other thing I always look for is an innovative take on something very challenging. So, for example, one of the things that drew me to BrainChip was the fact that they're solving hard AI problems in very different ways from their competitors. And so that's that's what got me drawn to that stock in the first place. Yeah, that's that, those are great points. And in relation to uh, BrainChip, you just said, we look at things uh, in a forward-looking way. And uh, having you recognize that and piquing your interest in our technology and not only where it is today, but where it's going, is, those are the things that excite us. And and myself personally being, uh, you know, with my finger on the pulse and talking to prospects, uh, future customers and current customers <laughs> all day long, we really get to, to, to understand and recognize what the future of technology is going to look like and the evolution of AI itself and, and how BrainChip is going to play a role in that. So for our listeners as a technologist, how do you see the BrainChip technology from your perspective playing out in real time, real life applications? Sure. Yeah. So uh, I think the two big things that draw me to brain chip in terms of real life, real time applications, the first is that low volume, low size, weight and power form factor. And so that enables applications 
like being put on drones or being put on sensors on drones without taking up too much weight, but providing a lot of extra compute power. I think that's really important. And I think that's going to drive down the costs of having drones, for example, pilot themselves, find their own landing spots, avoid obstacles, because they can be trained very quickly to do those things using the brain chip sensor by sensor, having a brain chip behind each sensor instead of on the main computer. And that brings me to my second point, which is that neuromorphic uh, processing, right? So being able to learn things quickly because you're learning like a human instead of like a regular neural network. And what that enables, I think, is moving away from drones to a different example. You can imagine small medical sensors, you know, non-invasive, but you know, for rare medical conditions where you don't have a lot of use cases, so you don't have a lot of training data, being able to feed a brain chip one or two pieces of data, and then having it be able to recognize that condition in the future is really important. There are a lot of medical conditions that just don't have a lot of training data to feed a regular AI. So using neuromorphic processing to be able to do that with only one or two cases is outstanding. Combine that with the low swap, and now you have something handheld that can detect that type of medical condition. It doesn't need to be a big fancy machine like a CAT scanner or an MRI that you can use in a non-invasive way to help detect conditions early, rare conditions early. So those are the two things that draw me to brain chip. You brought up really uh, two really good points, Alex. With our technology, uh, the way we've architected our processor and how we focus on the event domain, we have the potential to address so many applications. But one in the near future, uh, as you've highlighted, is what I, I call unmanned vehicles or EVs and drones, right? And I was actually watching a, a drone video today about a drone that was um, dusting crops with fertilizer and moving around. And, and that's what uh, some of the folks are doing with it today. But if you look towards the future, you, you highlighted something that is, is really important when it comes to AI, and that's the ability for a low power processor to be able to function in, with multiple aspects, one of them being objects, right? Recognizing objects, the other one being sounds, and then smell, and even touch or vibrations. So the fact that you could do that all on one device and train it all on one device, those are the things that get us excited about BrainChip. Uh, talking about the medical aspect of it, uh, you brought up some really good points. But one of the things I, I, I think that we, we need to understand a bit more on, and maybe you could, you could uh, um, kind of highlight this, is when we talk about training, a lot of people don't understand what does training mean when you take a device and you, you teach it something. Can you go into that, please? Sure. So when you think about how you train yourself, like when you learn something, it takes you not a very long time to pick it up. For example, if I show you you, an image of a cat, and then I show you a different image of a cat, right away, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's a cat. And the special thing about humans is we're able to do that even if you change the angle of the cat. That's like a very visual, easy example. For machines, it turns out that you have to use a lot of data to train it all of the different individual angles to look for a cat. Right. And there are certain tricks you can play and certain things you can do to make that machine learn faster. But what you can do is you can kind of make this plot of on the X axis. It's how many uh, images did I have to show that computer? And on the Y axis, it would be something like how good at detecting a cat is it after that many images? And so you get a little curve there. Right. Humans, that curve is really simple. It's it's just a I showed you a cat and now you recognize a cat. So for the brain chip, because you're neuromorphically processing something, which means you're processing it like a neuron, like a human brain, that plot is very simple. It's I showed you a cat and now you recognize a cat or close to it, right? Maybe it's a low number of samples, but for computers and hard image processing problems, that number of images can be in the tens of millions. It's a big difference. Does that answer your question? That you, I, I mean, I'm smiling. You're spot on. I mean, that, that one of the things that, that we're making a lot of impact with is the fact that what we call one-shot learning, right? And the fact that we can train on the device. And um, as you mentioned, and I think uh, for our listeners, it, it's really important that, that you process what Alex just said. Uh, tens of thousands of images, tens of thousands of functions in order to learn something is scaled down to to one shot, 
And in some cases, maybe it's challenging, but you have to do two shots. But the time for me to say one shot and two shots, we are now done training. So it's, it's a massive difference and will play a, a very impactful role as the world of AI continues to evolve. So one of the things we talk about at BrainChip, besides, you know, drones and some of the other, you know, promising products and commercialization of technology that we talk about, we also talk about beneficial AI, things that impact us. And I know you already highlighted medicine, for example, but can we talk a little bit more about that? Let's talk about beneficial AI and BrainChip's role in beneficial AI. Sure. Yeah. So I think the idea of beneficial AI, you know, when we see movies featuring AI, AI is this big, scary machine, whether it's a physical robot or a rogue AI going digital and kind of owning the internet, right? But the reality is because we are the ones designing AI, we're able to design different AIs to help us in different ways. One beneficial AI, just as an easy example that I think everyone can understand, is Netflix, connecting you to movies through algorithms that learn more about your preferences and feed you things that are based on those preferences, right? That's a form of beneficial AI. To the medical example, you know, you can do some simple routine tests and then say, hey, you fall into this category of person based on things like your blood type, your temperature, whatever other very basic low level medical profiling they can do. And then they can say on a large scale, hey, here are the types of general health risks you may be exposed to. And that's again, through lots and lots of data and lots and lots of artificial intelligence chugging through that data to make those decisions. Instead of matching you to movies, it's matching you to medical conditions, right? And you can go on and on that list. What makes BrainChip, I think, so interesting is now you can move that AI closer to the sensor. So where most traditional AIs work on giant servers, going back to the Netflix example, Netflix has a bunch of servers in a bunch of warehouses to run massive computations and then feed that back to the device you're watching Netflix on. BrainChip can do all of that right behind the sensor. For example, that detector, it will just be the sensor doing the sensing, feeding that to the detector, which would then do the computation right at the device level. And then the device would just tell you, hey, here's, here's what we detected. So you're removing that step of communicating to that server or that separate computer, which enables all these other beneficial applications. For example, unmanned drone flight that doesn't need cell service to work. That can be done in industrial uh, zones that don't have any communication to the outside world, et cetera. Yeah, it's a great great explanation on that. And when I look at beneficial AI, besides all the applications within the medical environment, um, I also look at it in regards to food consumption and our ability to process information and uh, distribute that food uh, to first world, second world, third world economies and environments. And those are the areas in which we can really drive brain chip and our technology and the, the Akita no processing unit as we drive it forward. So I, I have one last question for you. And, uh, you know, it's a little off the cuff, but I, I, I think you can hang with it. If you could be one superhero, who would it be? And if you could add one AI superpower, what would it be? Uh, if I could be one superhero, I would be Dr. Strange. Uh, because I would want the ability to move forward and backward in time and be able to try things over and over again. I'm I'm actually not a robot, so I would need lots and lots of tries to learn certain things, and Doctor Strange has the ability to do that. Uh, and I guess that leads me to my one AI superpower. I would love to see in all 360 degrees around my head and be able to process that all at once. That's my AI superpower. Nice. Well, Dr. Strange was a great one. So, uh, you know, I, I got to tell you, on behalf of, uh, of all of our listeners and uh, everyone else, I, Alex, thank you. Thank you for your insight and your feedback today. It's truly appreciated. Uh, for those that have not spent any time watching Ticker Symbol U on YouTube, do yourself a favor and get to know the channel watch the episodes. There's a tremendous amount of great information and Alex done a great, great job with that channel. Again, as I mentioned, on behalf of the BrainChip team, we want to thank all of our listeners, investors, analysts, employees, 
and everyone interested in learning more about our technology. We truly appreciate all of your passion and support. Our next podcast series will be next month. Until our next podcast, we wish everyone to stay healthy, happy, and most importantly, from Rob's words, stay out of trouble. Thanks for listening to the Brain Chip Podcast. Please remember to rate and review on your favorite podcast platform.